I'm going to give you a candlesticks crash course. Make sure you have your pen and paper ready so that you can write down the notes. You will need it, especially to those people who cannot stand my accent. So by the end of this free course, you'll be able to learn how to read candlesticks and you'll be able to understand what do all the individual candlestick pattern means. When you see it, you know for sure it's going to go in this direction, it's going to go in the other direction. When it comes to candlestick pattern, there are three main types. Now you can classify it in many different ways. The first way is based on the number of candlesticks. So the second way that you can classify it is based on the direction. Where is it going to go after this candlestick appears? Okay, so the first type of candlestick is the single candlestick pattern. Second type, you have double candlestick patterns, triple candlestick patterns. So the thing is, triple candlestick patterns will be stronger as compared to single candlestick patterns. Learn single candlestick patterns first, then followed by double candlestick pattern, then followed by triple candlestick pattern. Okay, now direction, it can be classified into continuation pattern. This means that when the pattern appears, it's going to continue in the same direction. Second one is reversal. This means that when the candlestick pattern appears, it's going to make a U-turn. So what are the functions of candlestick? The first function is it tells you what is the current sentiment in the short term, okay? Because in the short term, markets are driven by fear and greed. Then the second function is if you see a continuation pattern in the middle of the trend, it tells you that, okay, the trend is pretty strong. So it tells you the strength of the trend. Is the trend going to reverse or is the trend going to continue? So this for continuation patterns, if you see a reversal candlestick pattern, then it tells you which are the potential reversal points. By reversal, I mean the end of the whole entire trend. Candlesticks can also tell you where a retracement is going to take place. Is there a temporary market correction? Because you know that market goes up, retraces, market goes up, retraces, market goes up, retraces. So all these minor retracements, candlesticks can also tell you, okay, we are going to retrace right here and right here. So the fifth function is it can potentially tell you, okay, this is a good place to enter. This is a good time to enter. Aside from that, it can also tell you where should you exit the trade. If you're in the trade right now and you see, let's say, a reversal candlestick pattern, then you got to take some profits out or you can exit completely. Depends on your strategy. So aside from entry and exit, one very important thing as a trader is to know when to not open a trade because candlesticks can also tell you don't open a trade just yet because we are going to retrace. So let's say for example, you have a support, very strong support over here. You want to look for a buy trade. You see a bearish candlestick pattern on a major support. Then what do you do? You wait, you don't open a trade yet until you see a bullish candlestick pattern on a major strong support with confluence, then you can open a trade. Okay, right now you need to understand the very important principles because a lot of beginner traders, they get this wrong. The first principle, not all the candlestick signals are created equal. They may look the same, but then because of different contexts, different reasons, one might be stronger than the other. For context is different. Later on, I'm going to talk more about context. What does it mean? Okay. Second thing, you need to take note of two things. The first one is some candlesticks, you need to take note of the length of the wick or the shadow because it is important. Both the upper and lower shadows, okay? Some candlestick patterns, you need to look at the size of the body. Not only the size of the body, okay, but also the color. Whereas for some candlestick patterns, the size and body color doesn't really matter. For certain candlesticks, 
weight will be more important for certain candlestick patterns, body will be more important. So like I said just now, context, context, very important, determines the strength. Just like for example, if you see the same LV bag in a random shop in your neighborhood, as compared to if you see the same LV bag in a high-end shopping center, which one do you think is real? Even though both look the same, so it's the same concept. So the fifth principle, very important, fourth, fourth. You gotta learn how to spot the false signals. Because like I said, candlesticks cheat you as well, not just humans. So, so you gotta spot the cheaters, you know what I'm saying? The gold diggers, okay, gold. Because learning how to spot false signals, you will prevent yourself from getting into a trade that is not going to work out and hence you minimize your losses. And the fifth thing is, please don't just rely on candlestick patterns alone to enter a trade. Like for example, if you see a bullish army out of nowhere, then you just enter. If you do that, you're going to lose a lot of money. Okay, so what does candlestick context refer to? Just now I mentioned one example already. The difference in location in which that LV bag is sold. Same thing for candlestick patterns. If the candlestick pattern appears at the wrong location, then it is fake. So what does location mean? Is it located on a downtrend? Is it located on an uptrend? Is it located at the start of the trend? In the middle of the trend? Or at the end of the trend? So the thing is, you can have the best, most perfect candlestick formation, okay? But if it appears at the wrong place, it's not going to work out. The second thing when it comes to context is, what comes before the pattern? Is it a major drop? Is it a major rally? Because all these signals are very important. So for example, if you see a major drop in price, like a 90 degree drop before, a bullish army is formed. Again, later I'm going to talk about this. This increases the chance that a reversal is going to take place. And also one very important thing is what comes after the pattern. Because sometimes when there's a subsequent pattern that confirms your current candlestick pattern direction, then that increases the strength. So you can say that this is a little bit like a confirmation for the strength of your candlestick signals. And the fourth thing is, this is very important, okay? The time frame. You need to understand that for any signal, doesn't matter, chart pattern signal, candlestick pattern signal, breakout, moving average signal, trendline signal, whatever indicator that you use, the higher the time frame, the stronger will be the strength, the higher will be the strength of the signal. This is why I like trading higher time frames because not only are the signals stronger, but you don't need to put in that much screen time. So to be safe, look at hourly chart and above. H1, H4, D1, weekly, monthly. Lowest you can go M30, but I still feel that it's too noisy, you know, just like those haters on this channel. And okay, so like I said just now, continuation patterns. It means that the price is going to continue in the same direction. Example of continuation pattern, you have example three white soldiers and also three black crows. And one thing you need to know is that there is no such thing as a hard and fast roll. Like, okay, for sure, this is always a continuation pattern. Sometimes, reversal pattern, they can become continuation pattern. And same thing with continuation pattern, if they appear at a certain place, they can act as a reversal pattern. So some principles you need to know, it tells you whether you should continue holding a trade. If you are in a trade already, and you see a continuation pattern, maybe you can hold it a little bit longer. If you don't have a trade, then you can use it as a potential entry point. Or you can use it to scale in, depending on your strategy. This pattern works better if you see it at the start of the trend and also in the 
middle of the trend. I already done a video about this, how to determine the start of the trend, middle of the trend. Reversal pattern. Example, you have doji, you have hammer, you have hanging man, you have a bullish army, and also bullish engulfing. And at the same time, you have bearish harami and also bearish engulfing. But like I said, these two, if they appear at certain places, they can become continuation patterns. And then you have morning and also evening star. If you're confused by the names, it's okay because as long as you learn how to read the candlestick pattern, the psychology behind it, you don't really need to memorize the names. It's just to prevent yourself from becoming blurred when you, when you attend traders' meetings. It works best when found at the end of the trend or near the end of the trend. So reversal pattern, normally it will work out after a sharp rally. Like I said just now, before the pattern appears, there's a sharp spike in price upwards for uptrend. Then for a downtrend, if you see a sharp sell-off at the end of the downtrend, then this increases the chance that the pattern is going to work out. And third thing, you need confirmation to spot the false reversals. Because you know, sometimes price can retrace a little bit, you know, at the end of the downtrend, and then you'll be like, okay, the downtrend has ended. But then it turns out that it's not the end of the trend, but it is just a temporary retracement like that, and then it continues to go down. So you're gonna use different confirmation indicators, for example, divergence or a breakout in trend line to confirm, okay, this is a true reversal, it's not here to cheat me. So reversal patterns, you can use it to take profit or exit a trade. And if you're more experienced, beginners don't go and do this. You can use it to pick tops and bottoms. If you see a reversal confirmation, you can make a buy trade at the end of the downtrend. Now it's a little bit risky, that's why I say only when you're experienced then you do this. Back to this point number one, by trend I mean a long-term trend. I don't mean a trend that lasted for five minutes. Like that's not a trend, that's a retracement. This means that if a reversal pattern occurs at the end of a long-term trend, then the stronger is the signal. If it occurs at the end of a very short-term trend, like a one-second trend, okay, not one second, five-second trend, five-minute trend, it's not going to work out, okay? So the first single candlestick pattern is the doji pattern. Now, price open here. During that period of time, it went all the way up here, then it came all the way down here. After that, it came back to the same level and closed here. So what does this represent? Traders are indecisive. They don't know whether they want to continue buying or continue selling. So when you see this pattern, whether on an uptrend or downtrend, it tells you that buyers and sellers, they are uncertain about things. Of course, some people, they might see this as a sign that the price might U-turn, but the candle in itself doesn't really mean anything. You need an additional confirmation. Let's say if you see this at the end of an uptrend, after this candlestick pattern is a bearish signal, okay? Then this is a confirmation that, all right, right now they have made a decision that they want the price to go down and the uptrend will potentially end. So there are a couple of principles you need to know when it comes to doji. The first is that it is useful when you see it in a trending market and it is more effective on an uptrend as compared to a downtrend. If you see this in a ranging or very volatile random markets, just like you cannot see a clear direction, it doesn't mean anything. It's just a false signal. Remember what I said, context is very important. One of the context is, does this appear in a trending market, ranging market, or random volatile market? So doji doesn't mean anything, which is why you need an additional confirmation to tell you that, all right, buyers and sellers, 
they have made a decision. So if this candle is a bullish candlestick pattern, right after the end of a downtrend, the price is going to go up potentially. So this means that Doji alone can be a bearish signal, can also be a bullish signal, depending on what is the next candle or the subsequent candles. And also depends on what happens before that. Like I said, context, what comes before it, what comes after it. You need to know what is an ideal doji. What makes a strong and good quality doji just like a good LV bag? Ideally, the top wick being the same length as the bottom length. Of course, you don't need to use a ruler and be like, let me measure. I mean, you can estimate, you can see it with your eye visually. Okay, it's about the same length, so it is a good doji. And also, if you have to compare these two dojis, same length, which one is stronger? The answer would be this one. Because why? The longer the wicks, the stronger the signal. So, so when it comes to doji, you need to know that there are three very common types. Just now I taught you the normal one. Then the other type of doji is dragonfly doji. Now I know the names are just, you know, just to make things simple for you, okay? When you see a dragonfly doji, it means that this is a strong bullish signal. Just imagine that a dragonfly, when it flies, it will fly up. It doesn't fly down, if I'm making sense. Gravestone doji, I'm not trying to be morbid, but where do you plant a grave? You don't plant it in the sky, right? You plant it at the soil, at the ground, okay? The direction is downwards. So when you see this candlestick pattern, gravestone doji, buyers came in initially, then sellers pushed the price down and then closed over here. Sellers won and hence, this is a bearish signal. So the dragonfly doji, because this is a bullish signal, this is very effective if you find it at the end of a downtrend. The ideal dragonfly doji doesn't have an upper wick. It just has a lower wick. The longer it is, the better. The ideal gravestone doji doesn't have a lower wick, but has a upper wick. The longer, the better. And hence, it is more effective if you find it at the end of an uptrend. Alright, so the next pattern we are gonna talk this is my microphone, by the way, which is a cheap, useless. This pattern, base on top, and then you have a long wick below. This pattern, wick on top, then a base below with no lower wick. If you know the psychology of candlesticks, by right, this should be a bullish signal because price open here or here, sellers push the price down, but then at the end of the session, the buyers come back in and push the price up. So buyers should have won, right? This buy right should be a bearish signal. But in real fact, when you see these two patterns, they can be either bullish or bearish. So the bullish pattern for this, is called hammer pattern. Then for this pattern, the bearish signal is called hanging man, okay? For this pattern, the bullish signal, it is called inverted hammer, upside down, okay? Then for the bearish candlestick, it is called shooting star. So what's common about these two is that it is effective if you see it at the end of a downtrend. When you see these two patterns, it is effective if you see it at the end of an uptrend. And there's also something in common between these four patterns. The color is irrelevant, just like me on this channel. It's irrelevant. Doesn't matter if it's green, red, pink, purple, black. But since this is a stronger bullish signal, 
if it is green color then there is a slight little bit more advantage but at the end of the day even if you see a red color body it can still reverse the whole entire trend and because this is more of a bearish candlestick signal it has a slight advantage if it is red color so now some people will ask Karen how come a hanging man looks like this but it is a bearish signal because based on this it doesn't make sense now the psychology behind this is when the price opened up here sellers came in and pushed the price down right so the fact that sellers are here to begin with they appeared they existed to begin with they pushed the price down kind of tells you that okay maybe sellers are starting to come in even though even though at the end of the session yes buyers won but during the session sellers did come in and push the price down same principle for this one during the session buyers did come in for a while to push the price up the fact that they existed tells you that you cannot completely ignore buyers this is why this pattern even though it looks like a bearish candlestick signal it still has a little bit of bullish implications and hence people call it the inverted hammer if you don't want to memorize the names it's okay because i know it's confusing to put it simply if you see this at the end of an uptrend it is a signal that tells you that price is going to go down if you see this at the end of a downtrend it is a signal that tells you that price potentially is going to go up in other words it's just going to u-turn same thing for this if you see this at the end of a downtrend price might potentially u-turn depending on the context if you see this at the end of an uptrend it tells you that price potentially is going to go down if you are somebody who like to trade on a retracement you want to wait for price to come down and then you enter at a better price before the price goes up this can also help you make good entry points of course you need more confirmation like i said just now so the next candlestick pattern is called a spinning top so you have a upper rig a small body in the middle again doesn't matter what color it is and you can say that this is quite similar to a doji because it is a reversal signal it is effective in a trending market if you see this in a ranging market it wouldn't be that effective and it is effective if found at the end of the trend okay so if you compare two spinning tops one that you see in the middle of the trend as compared to one that you see at the end of the trend which one do you think is going to cause a reversal the answer is the one at the end of the trend so depending on the context this can be both it can be either a bullish signal it can be a bearish signal the longer the week the better it is and ideally you want upper week the same length as the lower week so that's the single candlestick pattern it's all done of course there are a lot more single candlestick patterns if i cover all the single candlestick patterns we are going to talk until tomorrow because i talk so much until the sky become black so now we are going to talk about double candlestick patterns there are two main types harami and engulfing patterns also bullish and bearish so you have bullish harami bearish harami bullish engulfing bearish engulfing and these four things they have one thing in common one thing in common is that color is important the weak length is less important you see the difference just now when you're talking about hammer doji spinning top the wicks are super important but the color doesn't really matter right but right now color is important so for a bullish harami the first candle is a big red candle okay meaning a bearish candle 
Then the second candle is a small green candle. And again, this is useful if you see it in a trending market at the end of a downtrend or in a bullish trend and there's a retracement and you see this, you can potentially enter. Regardless of what happens, it tells you that price is going to go up. Then a bearish harami is the opposite. The first candle is a large green candle then the second candle is a small bearish or red candle what makes a strong harami signal? the larger the difference between these two candlesticks the stronger is the signal for example if you have the second candle instead of being a small green candle it goes like this it goes slightly above the midpoint then this is not as strong the larger the bearish candle as compared to this candle then the stronger it is bullish engulfing pattern you take this flip it put it here then it looks like this small red candle followed by large green candle so when you see this pattern it tells you that the price is going to go up whether you see this at the end of a downtrend whether you see this in a retracement bearish engulfing pattern you take this flip it then you get small green candle followed by big red candle so it tells you that price is going to go done same thing for this one the larger the difference the stronger it is ideally you want the small candle to be below the midpoint of the large candle okay so enough talk about double candlestick pattern now we go to the next level we talk about triple candlestick pattern so i classify into three main types stars consecutive meaning three same candles at once and then doji so a bullish signal you would have your morning star so first thing first you would have a large red candle followed by a middle candle that is small and the middle candle the color is not that significant okay third candle is a green candle that is slightly larger than the second candle but smaller than the first candle okay so it has to be a bullish candlestick pattern a green candle ideally it has to close above the midpoint of the first candle so when you see this signal this means that it is the end of a downtrend now there is something very similar to morning star and that is morning doji star the only difference is the second candle it has to be a doji third candle again is the same green candle has to close at least halfway point above the first candle and if you have to compare which is a stronger bullish signal is it this one or this one the answer is the morning doji star so for bearish star the name for it is evening star how does an evening star look like? the first candlestick green candle okay green candle followed by a middle candle that is smaller okay followed by a big red candle a third candle that is larger than the first candle and the second candle take this flip it then it becomes this one you also have an evening doji star okay the only difference is the middle is a doji and then the third candle is a big red candle so again which one is stronger the evening doji star or the normal evening star you already know the answer okay so just imagine that when the sun comes out in the morning it doesn't go down it goes up so bullish signal 
During the evening, the sun has to set. When the sun sets, it goes down and hence bearish. So the next pattern I want to share with you is three white soldiers. If you don't want to remember the name, it's okay because to put it simply, it's just three consecutive bullish candles. And the bearish signal would be called, is called three black crows. Consecutive red candles. Now, some people would say this is a continuation pattern, but it can be a reversal pattern. For example, if you see this being formed at the end of a downtrend, it can potentially signal to you that, okay, the downtrend is going to end because the bulls are strong. If all the factors are constant, compare these two, which is stronger, which is a higher probability signal, three white soldiers. So the ideal pattern for three white soldiers is if there is no upper shadow, okay? It is okay to have lower shadows like this. Then for three black cross, the ideal pattern is if it doesn't have lower wicks. It is okay to have upper wicks. But with that said, even if it has lower wicks, because of the fact that there are three bearish candlestick consecutively, it can still be a bearish signal. All these patterns have one thing in common is that it works best if you see it at the end of a downtrend. All these patterns have one thing in common, it works best if you see it at the end of a bullish trend. And there's one more pattern I want to share with you is tri star pattern. Now this pattern, it depends on the context. It can be a bullish signal, it can be a bearish signal. If you see this at the end of a bullish trend, then it is a bearish signal. If you see this at the end of a bearish trend, then it is a bullish signal. So this pattern is not very common, but if you see it, it means major in decision. Okay guys, I hope that this crash course gives you a quick idea, gives you a quick recap on how to use candlesticks. Of course, you need a lot more things like confirmation indicators and my voice is officially gone right now. So if you want to learn more about confirmation indicators, I've done a video in the past. You can check it out over here. So with that, I'll talk to you in the next video. Bye.